Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Jerry Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Green Lantern, the names, ever since we started doing our lineup, the names have just been popping up of the possibles. There have been rumors of certain individuals that we did not have on our list, Brian, because we thought, haven't they done enough already in the superhero genre? Can we find somebody else? A few names did pop up that I was like, yeah, that makes sense. That could that could work, but we'll talk about it. But now there seems to be a hunt, Brian, for this role. Uh, where are we with that? Who are the names that uh, have been encircled around for the possibility of playing Hal Jordan? Well, the biggest one is that an offer was made to Josh Brolin, and he said no. So Good that's, for you. That's confirmed. The Hollywood Reporter had that story. So our former Thanos, our former Cable, um, that's who they wanted, and he said he passed. Uh, and I would suspect he passed in part for that reason, that he's already done multiple things, uh, albeit in the Marvel side, but has kind of had maybe had enough and didn't want to do a TV format. Uh, that could be a movie format later for that. The other two names that were prominently featured as being on, on the list, but it doesn't seem like they're offering right now, is or Ewan McGregor, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, obviously, and Matthew McConaughey, who HBO Warners would have history with, if you think about you know, True Detective, which they've said Lanterns is sort of a True Detective style show. He was on the original version. Uh, he also was in Christopher Nolan's Interstellar. So this is a guy familiar more to Warners than anything else. I personally did not care for either of those choices. What was the other choice? It was... Uh... Ewan McGregor or Matthew McConaughey. I wasn't yeah. a huge fan of either of those ideas. Um, I think Brolin could have done it. He certainly has like an arrogance sometimes. Like if you look at his character <laughs> in the Sicario movies. But I also don't feel like it would have been an inspired Hal Jordan. I feel like that would have been a safe... Yeah, you know. Yeah. If we're going to see these characters for the first time, let it feel like the first time we're seeing these characters. Especially because they've got to distance themselves, and they are with the age, but really distance themselves in the Ryan Reynolds take on, on Hal, right? It is out there. It does exist. So yeah. you really need to go in a really different direction, I think. And um, I don't know. N none of these three struck me as it. I don't know that you and I have hit it other than if Bradley Cooper wanted to take the call. But I just other, like, other than that, I don't know that there is like a we've seen a rumored name where it was like, aha, like that's Chris guy. Pine. See, I would say not old enough. And I don't think Chris Pine. I mean, now Chris Pine obviously was Steve Trevor. I think Chris Pine could be Hal younger. Hal, I think Chris Pine would be great. I think if they're going for grizzled 50, 50 to 60 year old Hal, then I don't think Chris Pine, he's just too, he's too handsome. He's too, he's too young looking. I think to pull that off. God. Do you think Brolin could have like, what would, what, what, had he said yes, what would have been your reaction? It would have been hard to separate myself mentally from Thanos. That's all. I mean, it would be very different than either of the comics characters he played, right? I mean, the the shtick and the the appeal, and he wouldn't really be in the prosthetics the same way he. I mean, Cable had a lot of prosthetics too, and even even before he got the Thanos being somewhat motion capture or whatever. But yeah, I don't know. I just when I saw it, I was like, you know, cocky pilot who's been through a lot, mentoring John Stewart. It just didn't it didn't add up for me. Yeah. Did you have any new names for um for Hal? Other than the Chris Pine, because I'm looking for that guy that has that arrogance and that cockiness that can play Hal Jordan, and he has that. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there's some others out there, too. I just haven't seen it yet. I haven't said aha uh -huh for certain characters. I did say aha uh -huh for someone else, though. Yeah, we'll get to that. So <laughs> it's funny. In that same, and the reason we're going to talk about that actor, I will say this is too old for a Bahal. But when I saw him in the film, I was like, man, if he was 
15 years younger, 20 years younger, maybe he could have pulled it off. Don Johnson, I, when I saw him on screen in the movie, I was like, you know, Don Johnson yeah. now, no way. But Don Johnson 15, 20 years ago, when he still kind of was Sonny Crockett, but not, but, but aged, I was like, yeah. maybe, maybe yeah. he could have been hell. But no, I mean, now he's 75. I mean, that's, that's yeah. too much of an ass now. Unless he's a scepter. <laughs> Do we want to talk about the number one and only one, the <laughs> only choice? Because anything else would be just, I mean, granted, I like uh, uh, Curling, um, Sterling K. Brown for uh, John Stewart. Yeah, I think, he, again, I think if we were going older, John, I think he would be outstanding. I think he's he's almost 50. So I think it's going to be too old for what they're saying. But mm -hmm. I agree with you that in some ways, if we're doing older John, younger Hal, Chris Pine and Sterling K. Brown might have been a, a, a very interesting combination. Oh, yeah. That's not what they're casting. So. Yeah. They're being very specific as to what they yes. want. Yes. But Brian, when I, I heard of the movie, because it, it was, uh, I think it was, I saw it just scrolling through news articles, whatever, and the movie Rebel Ridge yep. was being talked about and being praised, uh, especially the actor himself in terms of how he portrayed that character. And Brian, I saw the movie and I said, there it is. Yes. There's no need to look further. Call his agent now. Make it happen now. You don't got to do too much with physical anything. That's your guy. We are referring to An Aaron Pierre. Yep. Uh, in Rebel Ridge. It, he, he, it, what, did it remind you of Reacher slash something else, Brian? Or just Reacher? What, what was popping into your mind when you saw this? Well, I said it was more first blood meat. Yes, 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 yes. Than yes. Reacher. Yes, yes, yes. And the reason I say that is because Reacher doesn't hesitate to kill anyone. <laughs> and, and part of what makes the movie great is that this guy has Batman's code of not doing that. We want. I want to do it. We want to do a show about Rebel Ridge as a movie. But if we're good, but the Aaron Pierre discussion, thirty years old, um, got some acclaim for Barry Jenkins' Underground Railroad TV series, but has not hit big. This has the potential to be one of the great sliding doors oh, sequences. Um, so if you will recall, he was signed to be the villain. Opposite Mahershala Ali in yes. Blade. That's why I remember his name from. And at the time, nobody really knew who he was. And then he confirmed that as Blade went through all of its problems, his character was written out of the script and he was no longer part of the project. That moment, if he does go on to become Jon Stewart or something else, or honestly taking over the role in this movie, because this movie has its own troubled history, could wind up being one of those we look back on it and it's like a what if you know what if blade had happened with him as the villain and then you know instead of where he winds up going but i agree with you six foot three looks amazing sounds better it, he's playing mufasa he's, he's voicing mufasa <laughs> but it's like and he has a look it's distinctive and like the minute you see it you're kind of like you know he he definitely could be a lantern. Like you could do, like just throw the suit on him. Like he looks like he looks like John physically. He moves and sound. I mean, I, you couldn't have a more perfect John Stewart. And he's yeah. in, right in the age bracket. He's going to be hot off this movie. They'd be idiots not to call his agent and try. If they haven't already, they'd be idiots if they haven't called him already, Brian. Already, he should have been getting the call because I'm pretty sure these movies aren't seen the first time when they release. I'm pretty sure people talk about, look at this guy, yo, this guy, watch when this movie comes out. I don't know. I'm pretty sure, man. So who knows what's happening on that end? Because right now we're only hearing about, we need Hal Jordan. Yeah. But in theory, Stewart is the lead. I mean, I guess they're co-leads, but the pitch has been it's a Stewart, you know, one and Hal 1A series. And so 
this is yeah this this is definitely one of those force of nature performances where you just like the se- every the second he's on screen you can't take your eyes off and right, it's, when, it's amazing when and not to take away the attention of of what should happen but when i heard the name matthew mcconaughey yo are you kidding me yo all right all right all right <laughs> nah yo it's like come on man but whatever but this guy there is a restraint oh, yeah. to the performance yes he his his monologuing like his monologue about pace is that is one of the best things i've seen in a long time you guys have to see the movie to see but then his emotion right he keeps it under wraps and then when he breaks it out yeah, yeah, yeah. Is 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 a birth. spoiler alert for there's a death in the family, and then also in support of you know kind of the friends he makes along the way in this movie. Like he has real dramatic chops. Like you put him in this role, and it is not a wooden superhero lead. Like yeah. this is somebody that can make John Stewart into you know both the troubled soldier that John Stewart was. In you know the intergalactic obviously hero that he becomes, but you know the, if we go back to the animated series, like that John Stewart has a lot of emotion. Like that's part of what makes that rendition kind of fun, right? He falls in love. He gets really you know he gets really angry at times. Like so, it's just there's no need. You know you know what this reminds me of that scene in Heat when the dude is telling her about the deal. <laughs> Which one? Okay, go ahead. And he's and he says to her, "But I, you, know, I don't got to sell you this because this kind of stuff right here oh. sells itself." <laughs> Michael T. Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, this sells itself. You, know, you don't gotta. But yeah, let's see. Let's yeah. see. This will be very interesting. Um, before we leave, Aaron Pierre, though, it's in the category of what ifs. Mm-hmm. This isn't the only role he could play. Maybe if nah, they start over it. with Blade, he shouldn't be the villain. He should actually be the Daywalker. Oh yeah, oh, that part I just thought about it right now when we were talking. And I was I was watching them. I was like, just with his eyes, his his look, the way he moves. I was like, and he, that voice. I was like, if He's you wanted perfect. something that wasn't Wesley Snipes, but definitely screamed. <laughs> Kind of daywalker, like part ninja, like what? I was like, I think they might have if they're gonna do it, and we'll talk about it in another show. If they're really gonna wipe the slate clean here, like maybe they should call him back and say you want the lead this time. For me, Brian, I I would have to see what that looks like. I would have to have him get the sh- read for this. Yeah, he definitely has the look for John Stewart. I just give it to him. Yeah, well, that, yeah. That, this is yeah. 100%. For Blade, for Blade, I would have to see him read and see if it, you know, if it captures that imagination. It also just fascinated me because, you know, it, it's not totally fair to Mahershala Ali, but we got to see Aaron Pierre move, like, and do f- real physical work in this movie, and I was impressed. And so yeah. it made me it was like, okay, if you want, you know, a sort of agile, powerful blade who you could train up in sort of the martial arts like this guy looks like he could handle that um so i mean i don't know if he quite gets to snipes athleticism because wesley snipes is probably one of the more athletic leads we've had in 50 years but it at least crossed my mind yeah. at least crossed my mind i thought you were gonna go the black panther route no that's not what i thought I yeah think. i don't I, he has gravitas but i don't think it's the right gravitas and necessarily the right look for that that's not what i would have yeah i gotta be honest the other thing i thought of in this day and age was was there a a role like there i'm not saying i would do this there but i said it was first blood meets batman there was like a little bit of if you wanted to do an alt universe batman could he do it because that voice was definitely a batman style voice i'm not saying we should do it no no I, i know that it just crossed my mind of what roles could you maybe change the ethnicity of safely that he actually would be a great lead for i'm sure there are a few out there 
and he's 30, right? The guy that 30. I 30, yeah. The guy that I said I forget his name. Um that should be Black Panther. I showed him to you when we were doing yeah, the show yeah. with Tracy. He, yeah. He's 31. Interesting. He looks older than 30. Yes, he At does. least in the part. That part made him look a little older because they had him like I think he would look like he was almost like like gaunt and yeah, and he was yes, ragged yes, a little yeah, bit yeah. in the, yeah. the part. But yeah. So yeah, I mean those are the sweet spots, but Yeah. So, so yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh DC's efforts or Warner Brothers efforts to find their how. Who would you pick? They're clearly offering money because Josh that, Bro- if you offer Josh Brolin, that means you were willing to you, commit some dollars. <laughs> it's exactly. not it's, like, it's an A list that's an A list actor. So But here here's the thing. I think most of the individuals who are being approached with this are looking at this role. Like, could this ruin me? Is this, uh, you know, am I going to be made fun of? You, you got to, because it can't be, oh, I'm going to be great. I don't know. It can't, I think because the of the show, state yeah. of the superhero genre right now, Brian. I hear you, but I would say like having Lindelof and Mundy around that helps your cause True. when you're making True. that call that like this is not a joke. And also let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Aaron Pierre taking on the role as Jon Stewart. That's, come on. Come on. <laughs> right? It's like, what are we talking about? Any other name is like, nah. You know, because nobody really knows this guy. I'm pretty sure they know him now. Yeah. But we'll want to see more of him because we only saw a glimpse of him in this movie. Yeah. So there is reason to get this guy now so that he can embody this role because you just can't see continue to see the same faces uh and we need to treat these roles like we're casting for the role of uh, john stewart and this guy gotta be john stewart yeah just like robert be, yeah. downey jr was tony Stark, chris hemsworth all them dudes black widow all them dudes. you you that's who you think of yeah and like you should be treated and they are i think they're you know hbo is treating this series like we're going for the Emmy, like this. We're going for the Emmy. That's what we're known for, yeah. you know, and that's what we're going after. So, like, if you take on this part and you believe in it, that's how you should view it. You should view it as like I have an opportunity to win an Emmy as John Stewart in the drama category, and if it really hits, I have a chance to play him on the big screen as part of the DC universe. But like, what that's happens if it. it don't? Though that's the thing. That's the scary part. Yeah. I mean, you go into these things. Perhaps not even thinking that you're looking at it as a robot because of how big this is, Brian. This is yeah. this is this is this is real deal here. But I mean, like HBO. I mean, to their credit, when HBO has really put money behind a flagship series, how many of those have been total trash? I can't think of that many. I mean, the upside's been much higher, right? Like the, yeah. the Game of Thrones or Succession or you know, um, True Detective or The Sopranos. Like they. When they typically watch, uh, put you, the wise guys. When they put you in that slot, typically it's been a good, well received show. I mean, yeah. 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 I don't know if you did you, have you seen Wise Guys on, on Max? No. Check it out. I don't know. It, it, it's a it's a two part documentary on the making of the Sopranos. Oh, I've heard about this. Okay, yeah, I've not yeah, watched yeah, it. Yeah, yet. yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh the Green Lantern, latest Green Lantern uh, news. Who would you pick for cer- certain these certain roles? Uh, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. The show.